Hey everybody, hello again. Uh, welcome to Wednesday. Today has been a day. Um, I'm tired. I, I look tired. I excuse the Medusa hair. I don't know what's going on here today. Um, I work from home. I work in a type of a online on remote, I guess would be a better word, remote call center type environment. Um, sometimes it's not too bad uh, as far as like every day-to-day -day stuff goes. It's, it seems normal. Other days something happens or I'm on a long call or um, customers irate or just something gets stressful. Who knows? The temperature in my you know work area warms up or it, whatever and I start flaring up and that can be that can be really uh, trying and, and hard because you know you just imagine you know holding something that's boiling against your skin and then trying to have a meaningful conversation um, like a um, like a professional <laughs> and it's not always easy so uh, for those of you who have e uh, EM um, or know someone who does, you know, you probably t completely get what I'm saying. For those of you who don't and just happen to be tuning in for whatever reason, um, yeah, just imagine, you know, burning and then trying to, you know, oh, I can, I can help you, you know, with your bill or whatever it is, or listening to somebody, you know, rant about their issue on, on their, their account and, uh, and you're doing the best that you can to breathe through your excruciating pain and, and help them. Um, and that's not their fault. You know, you're there for them. That's your job. That's what you're there for. So you're just doing your job. But, um, for us, it, it's really hard. You know, it's, it's, that's a understatement of the year. You know, <laughs> it takes incredible, uh, perseverance to be able to talk to somebody when you're suffering like that and to be able to perform tasks and and you guys know I know you, I know you do um, anyway so today's been an okay day you know I, I've had a little bit of a flare off and on during a, a couple calls just where I think the temperature in my my work area might have gone up a little or you know, maybe I was just a little busy and, you know, you get warmed up doing that sometimes, but, um, but not too bad. I'm just, I've been a little tired. Um, I think I had some flares, you know, last night around bedtime, which can be pretty annoying. Um, it makes it hard to sleep and, you know, <laughs> You can't really lay for your face, you know, you can't lay your face on anything. So it's like you're laying there with your head up on your pillow and fans going on each side of your face and, you know, just trying to get comfortable enough to sleep. And sometimes you, you just can't, you just, you know, you just burn for a while and maybe watch Netflix or whatever you can do. And then eventually, you know, it calms down and you go to bed if you're lucky. Anyway, that's that. Um, I, I was going to show a little bit today, uh, about medications that I take. I don't know if I can do this without messing things up. So let's see, I'm not very good at this. So this is my, let's see, this is my daily, um, box or well, it's my weekly box was like what I take per day. I'm not sure you can get a good view of that or if it's just all over the place, but it's a lot. I have um, alarms on my phone that go off. Like this is my medicine box. I am probably doing a horrible job of showing that. Uh, that's what I refill everything with. Um, it's crazy, you know, some of that stuff in the in the green box is stuff I don't use anymore, but that I've tried, and I can go through some of that with you, so uh, let me start with this too, you know, I explained what anhydrosis was, and I think I've given a good impression of what arithmomyalgia is, but I didn't exactly say what arithmomyalgia is, um, and it is a neurovascular condition uh, that causes extreme burning swelling and redness in the skin um, if there's no cure um, it won't kill you 
but it does have, unfortunately, uh, as far as mortality goes, the cause of death for people who have EM is generally suicide, um, unless it's related to something else. Um, it's isolating. It's, it's horribly painful. Um, the good thing is there's a lot of support and there are people that are learning more and more about it. So we're getting more options for treatment and, you know, uh, what, what works for one person might not work for the other, but it might. So, hey, there's that. So anhydrosis, highest risk uh, for that particular illness is heat stroke. Um, earth mammalgia, it's, it's the pain, it's the isolation, it's the, the trauma to the body and the mind, you know, so it's, it's hard. Um, somebody else more educated than myself or eloquent, you know, with their words or their experience may, may know better, may speak on this in a different way, but that's my impression and experience of it. And you can look it up for yourself. There's, uh, you know, there's information out there. Um, what I take now uh, is on a daily basis about 2,000 milligrams of Tylenol. I take 1,000 milligrams of magnesium. I take three milligrams of lorazepam. I take 2,100 milligrams of gabapentin, I think, yeah. Yeah, that's, I'm sorry, <laughs> too much medication. Uh, yeah, 2,100 milligrams of gabapentin. Um, I'm on iron uh, for being anemic. Um, I'm on Prilosec for acid reflux. I don't know if any of those are related. I have heard when your face burns that your stomach is also burning, but I have no real correlation with those, so who knows. Um, what else do I take? I take uh, metoprolol, uh, 25 milligrams, three times a day. And oh, uh, Zyrtec, 20 milligrams a day. And Allegra, I'm just taking one pill, so 180 milligrams a day. So uh, I have these alarms set on my phone to tell me when to take my medicine. I take it throughout the day. Um, I have a new topical. It's called I'm going to say it wrong. Midadrine, maybe. Anyway, it's M-I-D-O-D-R-I-N-E, 0.2% uh, in Vanacream, and it's a vasoconstrictor. Um, it's purple. They mailed it to me from the Mayo Clinic Pharmacy. Let me see if I can show it here. There you go. Very interesting stuff. I um, have not tried it yet. I need to, um, but as I said the other day in one of my other videos, I'm, I'm a little scared too, and it's gonna take me a little bit of courage to work up to it, you know. Some of these medications that I've taken, I've uh, started in small doses and just kind of worked my way up as I went along because I, you know, I needed to know, wow, my hair looks terrible, I'm sorry guys. I needed to know what, um, what it was going to do to me. Magnesium is pretty hard on your stomach. Uh, I know there's other kinds, uh, but that's the one they gave me. Mayo didn't seem to think that it made much of a difference because it was like the salt part of the magnesium of which kind you take didn't, didn't, wow, that's worse. Sorry. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Um, so anyway, uh, I take mag oxide is what mine is. Um, but yeah, working up to a thousand milligrams, I was kind of nervous because you Google, you know, high doses of magnesium and you see like coma, death, like all these things. It's like, you want me to take what? You know, so I called, I was like, hey, are you sure you want me to take a thousand milligrams of that? And uh, they, they said yes. So I was like, okay. So I started with four, you know, broke pills, worked it up to six, got it up to eight, finally up to a thousand. It has not been an, an easy ad, but now I... 
you know, it, it just is what it is. You know, some days my stomach's okay, some days it's not. I don't know if it's from that or something else, so whatever. Um, uh, what else? So I think the, you know, and I won't go on too much longer because I'm on break and I have to go back to work. But um, I think where we stopped off is where I finally started the Ativan and I, and I went home. Now, one of the things at that point, we were still kind of thinking um, allergic response or immune, you know, immune system response or something to the surgery or, you know, we, we didn't know what was happening at that point. So I, I was on 80 milligrams of prednisone. Um, my allergist had me on uh, Zyrtec, 10 milligrams, four times a day. Um, hydroxazine, 150 milligrams a day, which is like old school Zyrtec, like a, um, a generation, first generation antihistamine. Um, I was on Allegra, the 180 milligrams, four times a day. Um, Pepsid, uh, whatever the dosage is, I took that twice a day. Um, and then prednisone, 80 milligrams a day, which was killing my stomach. The Zolair that I was on, I had multiple steroid shots, both at the allergy office and um, at the hospital. My hair's starting to flare my ear. You can see uh, that it's burning, and so that's hot. Um, lots of medicine. And then when they couldn't figure out what was wrong, they told me I needed to go see a dermatologist and have a biopsy done. So I went into her office armed with my fan and she looked at my face and thought I had cellulitis. It was so red and so hot and so swollen that, um, she immediately thought, oh, this must be some type of cellulitis, you know, I'm gonna start you on antibiotics and uh, we'll get this biopsy done. And I mean, I was like, hey, if you think it's cellulitis in my face, can you just send me, send me to the ER or the hospital and, you know, you know, admit me, you know, cause I was so scared, I still wanted to be in the hospital. But, um, you know, she didn't, she, she told me to uh, take the antibiotics, wait for the biopsy, you know, biopsy came back, they were like inflammation, there's inflammation in your face, there's um, possible rosacea or urticaria, you know, so she was like, well, let's treat it like rosacea and, and urticaria and just treat both. So I stayed on these really high antihistamines. I started on doxycycline, 100 milligrams uh, once a day. I used sulfur washes. I used uh, Metrogel, Elidil, um, things like that. Um, Elidil, I will say, my face swelled up. I looked like uh, violet on Willy Wonka. You know, I was purple, it's like a grape. It was terrifying. That's, that's a, was a ice pack night for sure. Um, I never used that again. Uh, yeah. Not to say it couldn't help some people, but it certainly wasn't helping me. I went through the sulfur wash and the Metro gel for months uh, and all that other stuff that I was taking and, and it wasn't helping. And in addition to it not helping, I was in pain. And I kept telling them, you know, like I am in so much pain, you know, I can't do anything. I can't leave my chair. I can't go anywhere. I can't get away from these fans. And then I decided to go get a second opinion, go see another dermatologist. So I went there. Well, this this guy was friends with the one I was seeing. So he was like, that she's a great doctor, you know, you should just trust her opinion. Um, you know, and I was like, look at my face, you know, uh, this is not rosacea. This is, you know, this is something else. Something else is going on. Rosacea doesn't affect your ears. It doesn't come down into your neck. You know, it, it, you know, there's no pustules. I don't have any acne. Um, you know, it's, this is totally the, it, rosacea is warm and stingy. It doesn't make you feel like you're burning alive. You know, this is different. And, you know, he just didn't want to hear me. And I got frustrated and I turned my fan off. And when I did, man, my face just like lit on fire. It was so hot. But I wanted him to see how bad it would get. And at that point, I, I turned it off and I was like, I, I'm so done. Like, I need, I need someone to see how bad this is. I need to know how bad it's going to get if I turn this fan off. So I just turned it off and it burned. And he still held his ground and was like, well, you know, I trust her opinion. So I would just continue on with your course. So I left and I, I got in my car um, 
I remember going to Walgreens and buying Sarna and rubbing it on my face, which really did nothing. By the way, I had already tried every cream and ointment you can think of over the counter and put it in the refrigerator and let it get cold and rub it on my face. And the only thing it did was when I'd have my flare, it felt like I was cooking something on my face. I could smell though, like the Metro gel cooking or the aloe that I put on or the um, hydrocortisone cream or, you know, whatever else it was that I would put on my face. I put it on, it'd be ice cold when I put it on. In seconds, it's hot and it stinks because my face is burning and this stuff is on my face and it's burning and it's terrible. You know, so that stuff, it just didn't work. It didn't work for me. It doesn't mean it wouldn't help someone else. Also, the face mask thing, it doesn't help me, you know. I've had a lot of people suggest, have you gotten one of those gel masks, you know, and put it on your face? It's a nice suggestion. It doesn't help. It's not cold enough. It's not, uh, it's not enough. So, you know, I tried, I tried that. I tried a lot of things. Um, but at this point I got the Sarna, I rubbed it on. It's, it was a little stingy for a minute, but then, you know, it just felt hot, still burning hot. Um, I made it home and I was exhausted and I left the fan off. I was like, forget it. I don't care if my face burns off completely. I'm, I'm not turning on the fan. I'm, I can't live in this fear, you know, and I'm, I'm done. So I just got in my recliner and I went to sleep and I slept for like three or four hours and I woke up and um, my face looked like I had the worst sunburn ever, but you know, I wasn't any worse than I was before. And I was like, okay, this is horrible, but I'm not dead, you know. That was the first fear, you know, I had EpiPens by then in my purse, you know, it was terrifying. Um, but, you know, I wasn't dead. Um, my face was swollen and red and hot and painful, but I was alive and I had my fan turned off. And so from then on, um, I used fans as needed, but not 24 seven. That's kind of when that changed. Um, I, uh, I think it was a couple days later, my primary care doctor who had tested me for like everything by then, he had tested me for tumors, he tested me my hormones, my uh, like serotonin levels, cortisone, cortisol. Um, they had done um, mass cell activation tests, both, uh, trip, what's it called, triptase, triptase, I can't remember something, test. Um, I should look that up before I try to talk about it, but they did, they did one involving blood. They also did a 24 hour urine test. Um, uh, both of those were negative. They tested me. I've been tested for lupus a ton of times. I've been tested for, um, thyroid problems. I do have Hashimoto's, but my Hashimoto's thyroiditis is not, uh, affecting my thyroid function at this time. So they don't think that that has anything to do with it. Um, Gosh, what else? Of course they tested, you know, for anything that could have happened with my surgery. So, you know, my, my surgical site was healing. It was fine. There's nothing wrong there. Um, I do have what's called seronegative rheumatoid arthritis. So um, I have, you know, rheumatoid arthritis, but it doesn't show up on all my markers. So th there's that. Um, what else? I don't know. They tested for so many things. I had so many different tests done and they were like, we've, we've ruled out everything. Um, so my primary care doctor, he come, he calls me and he's so nice. And he, you know, I was like, what do I do? You know, I'm in so much pain. I've tried all this. It's not helping. It's not helping. What, you know, what's next, you know? And he tells me, he's like, I, you know, I don't know, you know, I'm not sure. And it was, the worst thing that I could have heard. It wasn't his fault, but it was just terrible. It was just a terrible thing to hear. And, uh, you know, he, I hung up the phone with him and then I, I braided my very long hair, put it in a tight ponytail and cut it off. And it was, that was my, that was my answer, uh, to what could be done. I was like, I, I have to do something. I have to do something and I can do this. I can make, I can make this change. It was weird, but my brother thought I, I just lost it. He's like, you, you probably temporary insanity, lost your mind, cut your hair off. But you know, <laughs> maybe, but I had to control something. I had to do something that would help me. And even though I 
completely regretted it at, at, at the time. It also gave me the feeling of some sense of control, something, you know. Anyway, um, from there we continued on with the same, kind of the same things for a while until uh, finally I told my husband, I was like, you know, I, I have 12 doctors, almost I think 12 at the time here in Tennessee and I'm not getting any better and I can't live like this. We've got to, we've got to go bigger. We got to go further. So I started putting out requests to be able to go to Cleveland Clinic, Johns Hopkins or Mayo Clinic. And, um, uh, it was a, it was a process. Johns Hopkins was the first one that approved me. So I made my plan to go there and to find out what they could tell me about what was wrong with me. I had at that point done enough research on my own that I was suspicious of arrhythmomalgia. I was like, this is the only thing that I found. Um, when I looked at like burning alive, man on fire, woman on fire, things like that. And I saw arrhythmomalgia and I was like, okay, these are my symptoms, you know, this, this is what I have. And then I got in on Facebook and I found the chat groups and I read all the stuff and, you know, read other people's symptoms and, you know, how they were feeling and, and everything. And it was like, oh my gosh, like I, I know this is me. And I told my dermatologist and allergist and they were like, I've never heard of that. You know, I'll have to look it up. I, you know, I don't think so. You know, that'd be very atypical. And I was like, what's typical about what's going on with my face? You know, what's typical about what's happening to me? Nothing, you know, we haven't figured it out. We haven't fixed it. We haven't made any progress in months. So tell me what's, what's typical about this. Um, because if you can tell me that, then maybe I can believe you. But if not, then I'm going to go somewhere where they'll, fi they'll help me figure it out. And um, I think it was, I can't remember the exact date, but it was the very end of September of 2021 that I was getting ready to go to Johns Hopkins. And like the day that I was leaving, my dermatologist changed my diagnosis from um, rosacea to first it was like facial flushing with some $10 word that that means with pain you know and then she changed it to arrhythmomalgia um, and she started me on a low dose of, of gabapentin she was like I'm gonna call it a low dose of gabapentin and let you try that to start and I was like okay uh, that's interesting. And then I went to Johns Hopkins and, uh, and we can pick back up from there. So, um, my journey to Maryland was not easy. Traveling sometimes is not easy because of, you know, the changes, but, um, yeah. So we'll go from there. I'm, I, I look like a mess guys. I'm, I don't know. Not that I'm ever don't, but this is particularly, I think I need to do something here. Put my hair up. But thanks for listening. I know that's not um, important. <laughs> but I'm about to go back to work. So, you know, have a good day. Maybe I'll talk to you guys later.